just having a bad hair day. Hi friends and welcome to my channel. Today I will share with you a very easy and safe way to migrate all your data and settings from an old Synology unit and into a new or a newer Synology unit reusing the same disks that you had in the old unit. Okay, so let's talk about it. So here I have the old unit and it's a DS215J unit. It's a consumer grade unit and we're going to attempt to migrate that unit or the contents of the unit into this DS718 plus unit, which you might recognize from a previous video somewhere up here. Okay, just a quick disclaimer guys. I'm not responsible if you try this at home and you lose some data. But before you get started on any of this, just make sure to have a copy of the most important files. With that out of the way, let's get moving. If you migrate from a very old Synology unit, migration between Synology units can be pretty hard because the way that Synology utilizes the drive. And it hasn't really changed, but the way that Synology can migrate or help you migrate have changed a lot. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at this very beautiful drawing that I made in paint. So a storage pool in Synology basically just holds information about the hard, hard drives that you want to put into either a RAID or not even a RAID. <laughs> any, any way you want to use your drives basically. So that's, that's all it is. It's a wrapper around your hard drives. However, if you configure a RAID and the RAID fails, the storage pool will fail. So it's the storage pool that you have to kind of, kind of manage from the Synology side of things. Another issue while migrating from one Synology box to another is that the DSM software is running off the storage that you put into the Synology unit. It kind of takes up a little bit of space on your drives and installs the stuff software there. So there's a few ways that we can migrate from an old Synology box to a new one. One of the supported ones from Synology is that you download their Synology Migration Assistant from their website. You have both Synology boxes running at the same time and you migrate all the data and uh, settings over the network. The pros of this solution is that it's semi-automatic. Uh, it's very easy to install the migration assistant on two Synology boxes and just get it up and running. The cons of this is that it takes a long time to migrate all your data depending on the amount of data that you have. It will also require you to have new disks in the new Synology unit. So if you want to repurpose the disks that you have in the old unit, that like I want, then it's kind of not an option for you. The second solution could be an external hard drive. So the pros of this is that you would have an extra backup of your files. The cons of this is that you would require to have a disk large enough to hold all your, all your files. And it would take a long time, probably take a long time, again, depending on the amount of data that you have, to copy everything to your external hard drive and then when everything is set up and ready on the new NAS, then you would have to copy everything back again. So that would take twice as long. Also, you would need to set up everything in the configurations manually again. It might be a good option if you want to just move uh, your disks and get rid of all your old configurations and just start fresh, but uh, it will still take a long time to migrate your data. The third method is an interesting one, and I would like to call this the YOLO method. As Synology actually states this as a method, this is why I'm kind of comfortable with using it, but again, keep a backup of your data before you get started on this. The thing with this method is that you would just be taking the old drives from your old Synology and putting them, putting them into the new one. That would be the fastest way, right? The pro of this would be that it would be super fast to move all your data because you just move the disks, right? obviously. The cons of this is that the drives might not get recognized by the new NAS. The goal is to move everything fast, but also reduce the risk of losing data. I will go with a combination of option two and three. I know that the old Synology is configured as RAID 1, so I should have two completely identical disks that I can just move to the new NAS. So here's some important information for you. If you are migrating from a NAS from the DS212, 213 series even, and previous to that, you and you are using RAID on those uh, boxes, then please make sure to have a full backup of all your important files before proceeding. Because um, back in the day, Synology was making a software RAID, and that meant that if you 
had to take the, the disks out to restore the data in some other situation like say one drive was uh, was corrupted and you just pulled the other drive out and put it into another machine just to get your data out you could not get the data out because the Synology, Synology has defined their own type of, of um, partition called Synology RAID. That was not very easy to get data from. I lived through that experience uh, back in the winter of 2013, I think, and uh, never got that data restored. Very sad times. So here's our checklist. One, we want to back up all our important data before we begin. We want to back up the current configuration. We want to move the drives to the new NAS. We want to configure the new NAS if there's something we need to configure and we're done. So the first step is to back up our important data. How do we define important data? That That is subjective, right? So you should make your own definition, but my definition is pretty clear. I will leave the definition of my important files in the description below. And while you're there, why not just smack the like button on your way up again? Okay, cool, thanks. So we go into DSM, we navigate to the control panel, then we go to the settings of the control panel and just take a backup of the NAS uh, configuration. And this will download a file to your computer. Just keep that file somewhere you, you know where it is and delete it when we're done. Okay, so that was quick. Step three, shut down the NAS. Now take out all the drives from your first NAS or the NAS you want to migrate from and insert them into the new NAS. When everything is set and you have installed the old drives in your new NAS, then you should just connect the NAS and turn it on and wait for it to boot up. This will take some time. While it turns on, go to the Synology website and download the Synology Assistant. When you have installed Synology Assistant, open it up and it should find your new NAS on your network. So pay close attention to what it says in the status column on the Synology Assistant. It should say Migratable. If it doesn't say Migratable, then you will lose all your data if you try to install a new DSM on that NAS. So if you want to proceed from here, make sure you have a full backup of all your data. So in my case, I'm lucky it says migratable, even coming from a J unit to a plus unit. And this has not always been possible. So what we need to do now is go to find.synology.com. It will look for NASs on your network. It should pop up with the NAS that we have connected to the network and tell you the IP address and it should also tell you which uh, version or which model number it has. Then there should be one button and one button only called migrate and just follow through the guide here and you can choose different options. In this case you can also choose to reset the configurations but keep your data but I want to keep the configurations and the data. So I'm just going to proceed here. So now we'll do the migration and while it's doing that we just have to wait. So when it's done it will try to navigate you to the DSM software and in this case you might see a warning saying that the certificate is untrusted. We just continue through that warning because we know this is our NAS and it's on our local network so we really don't care. And now basically you can just log in with your old credentials and uh, everything is as it was. Before, except that you might see in the down right corner that we have a warning about the storage pool. So what we need to do is go to the storage manager. We can see here in the top of the screen that it says that we can repair and we want to do that. So it has detected one of the drives and it has also detected the other one, but it doesn't know how to kind of make that work. But if we repair the drive, it should find the RAID that I have configured on the old NAS again. So I want to say that this time it went completely fine, but uh, let's be honest, this is not a risk-free operation and you should still keep your backup. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or you think that I missed something. So here we are friends. The only thing left to do is now to just hit the subscribe button and you have migrated your NAS successfully. I'm just kidding. You don't have to hit the subscribe button, but it's free. Bye bye and see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.